fabulous Las Vegas. PartyPoker.net presents Powerful Poker Profits, starring Vegas Vic himself, Victor H. Royer. And now, here's Vegas Vic. Hello and welcome to our show. We are about to introduce you to the wonderful game of Omaha High. This program is intended to cover the very basics for players who have never played Omaha. So if you already know how to play, we have more shows in this series on advanced strategies and concepts. But for those of you who are new to Omaha, this is the perfect place to be. And now, let's go to the table. Although Omaha is a similar game to Hold'em, such similarities are very deceptive. Having four whole cards with which to start means that there will be a lot more players entering the pot. But there is another difference which is more significant, and that is the single most important fact that you need to learn about any Omaha game. In Omaha and all of Omaha derivatives, such as Omaha 8, players must use two of their whole cards, and only two, to combine with any three on the board to make the best five-card poker hand. This one fact makes any Omaha game very much different from Texas Hold'em, where you can use either both of your whole cards, or just one, or neither. This has the effect of making some very weird combinations of cards and having players misread their hands and the board quite frequently. For example, it is not possible in any Omaha game to make a flush by using just one of your whole cards with four cards to the flush on the board. This is something very unusual to the players who have first learned to play Texas Hold'em. In order to make a flush in Omaha, you need to have two of the flush cards amongst your four whole cards, and you must match that with three cards on the board. The same applies to any straight and also to full house hands. One of the strangest things that you will find in any Omaha game, particularly in Omaha High only, is when you have the board double paired. For example, in our game, JR is holding King, Ace, 8, 10. In this case, two suits don't matter. Now let's say that the final board shows King, King, 3, 4, 4. Now if this was Texas Hold'em, you would of course have a full house, King's full. But in Omaha, you must use only two of your whole cards and not just one. Therefore, you cannot use the lone king in order to combine with the board cards and make a full house. You must use two of your whole cards in combination with any three and only three cards on the board. That's the only way to make a full house using two whole cards in combination with precisely three and only three cards on this board in this example. It is because of situations exactly like this and the mistakes that many novice players make as a result that Omaha and all of its derivatives are so extraordinarily volatile. Omaha is not Texas Hold'em and this also applies to playing pocket pairs. With four cards as your down cards you will get many more pocket pairs than in Texas Hold'em. However, in Omaha the value is significantly diminished. Many players unfamiliar with this concept often use their big pocket pairs in Omaha in the same way as they would use them in Texas Hold'em, and raise the pot prior to the flop and make themselves pot committed with what is really in this game nothing more than a medium to mediocre starting hand. Naturally, this assessment of these pocket pairs applies only pre-flop. On the flop, a lot of things will change. That is both good and bad for people starting with such big pocket pairs. Another mistake that players often make is to try to win the pot uncontested prior to the flop. This is something that you can do successfully in Texas Hold'em, but not so in Omaha. The simple truth is that in Omaha there are so many different possibilities available that only very few players will ever throw their hands away before seeing the flop. This is particularly so in Limit Omaha. Anything can happen on the flop, and that is precisely why many novice players will play just about any cards prior to the flop. The habit of trying to be aggressive prior to the flop is something that is very hard to break, and equally as hard to temper and alter to suit this new game. If you understand the concept that in Omaha there will be a lot more callers pre-flop, 
you will always be way ahead of the vast majority of other players who will approach this game thinking that it is just another version of Texas Hold'em. Save yourself some money by tempering your aggression until after the flop where you will be able to see not only what the value of your hand is or can become, but also gain a better understanding of what your opponents might be playing. The simplest and best advice to learn is this. If you don't have the nuts in Omaha, you'd better be drawing to it. This is because holding or drawing to the second nuts in Omaha will always cost you a lot of money and rarely win you the pot. Omaha High is a game where you can easily make what you think is a good hand only to see it beat by a better one. Therefore, your starting hands in Omaha must be of high quality and this means that your starting hand requirements should be even more stringent than in any other game. For now, just remember that although big pairs look nice, they almost never win unimproved in Omaha. The kind of hands you want to play are those that also contain combinations to such big pairs, particularly if suited or double suited. Hands such as Ace, King, King, Queen, double suited, Queen, Jack, Jack, 10, double suited, and on some occasions even hands such as 9, 10, 8, 9, double suited, or at least single suited. All of these hands, especially those containing the big cards, give you a multitude of possibilities. As a general rule of thumb, the kind of hands that you want as your starting hands for Omaha High are hands that can make a multitude of such possible combinations with a significant winning potential. In order to help you with this, here is a list of some of the most commonly considered better starting hands for Omaha High. All of these hands can be single suited, although preferably double suited. There are, of course, a great many more good starting hands for Omaha High. These are only a few examples, but if you understand why these examples are so good, you will be able to combine them with other cards to also reflect and modify these examples, thereby giving you the opportunity to expand your range of starting hands while preserving their value and potential profitability. Remember that in Omaha, there is no right or wrong there are only playable and not playable. This is a great game that is very popular, particularly in Europe. As you have seen, it is a game that can be both simple and complicated all at the same time. Now that you know how to begin playing, you are ready for more advanced strategies and concepts. For those discussions, you can tune into one of our other programs or click on the appropriate link on the designated webpage. And now, until next time, remember, to play smart and play to win. I'm Victor H. Royer and this has been a presentation of PartyPoker.net. Bye! This has been a presentation of MRM Entertainment Inc. in association with Nevada Production Studios and PartyPoker.net.